much, Allison. I got to watch that kind of unfold by Instagram. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hear it in <laughs> essay form. Um, is there anyone else who'd like to read for the open mic? Yeah, please come down. What is your name? Connie. Thank you, Connie. And are you all right with being filmed, Connie? I'm sorry. Would you like to be filmed, or should I shut off the video camera? Um, you see, I'm, I'm not uh, wanted in any other state, so that's okay. You can. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is something I wrote uh, a couple of years ago, and it's based on a personal experience. And the title of it is Interview, as opposed to Interview. I was crushed. I tried so hard to keep from letting anyone see my shoulders bent over from the weight of the 60 minutes of excruciating pressure on my self-esteem. I had prepared myself for this interview. Updated resume with numerous degrees, some newly minted from the most prestigious schools. I dressed in the appropriate business blue suit. Hair coughed in the latest style with a combination of straight and frizz. My interviewer sat across the table from me. Her wrinkled line showed her age <coughs> difference. After the initial pleasantries, I handed her my resume and she began to read. Placing it on the table, she began, your name. It's interesting, she said. I was caught off guard. Here I was in the post 9-11 era, an African-American woman with an Arabic name, three stripes. Before I could think of a suitable answer, she continued, I once had an assistant who changed her name. She paused momentarily and went on to say, I told her that finding a job would probably be difficult for her for the rest of her career. My heart sank. I thought to myself, maybe that was the last job she ever got. I had never told her that, in fact, it was my given name. Well, I see you have braces. Caught off guard once again, I thought, this must be intentional. Maybe this is some kind of test to see if I'm going to go off on her. I tried to search for an appropriate answer. This was a time that adults were just beginning to have braces put on. Maybe she thought that I was brought up in a low-income family that couldn't afford braces when I was a child. That somehow I was playing catch-up as a newly minted middle-class adult. She eyes my dress and looks me up and down as if I was wearing a dashiki and had a bone stuck through my nose. She looked down at my resume and continued the beat down. I don't see any corporate background. There's too much grassroots experience. Why don't you find yourself some major corporation to work for and maybe get another degree, something like finance or accounting? The steam was rising from my lower back and I just knew that it was visible from the top of my no longer very straight and now very, very frizzy head. Whatever she said after that, I can't remember and quite frankly, it didn't matter. All I recall is her extending her hand out Thanks for coming in today. Her handshake was as cold as her heart. I walked to the door, self-conscious, praying that she did not say anything else that would force me to turn and look her in the face again. I forced myself to keep my shoulders up and back straight. I didn't want to give anyone the impression, much less give her the satisfaction of any physical signs of this beat now. I entered onto the hallway and searched for a sign that said women. I pushed through the door, hoping no one noticed the tears that had begun to form in my eyes. I hurried into the bathroom stall, sat down on the toilet, and began to sob. You see, what hurt so much was not that I probably wouldn't get the job, but that the woman who sat across the table interviewing me looked just like me. <laughs> <laughs>